Hello and welcome to your tutorial of Moonlight Sonata. This song, it's moody, it's emotional, and it might be one of the most beautiful pieces of piano music ever written. And I'm gonna walk you through how to play it step by step. We're gonna work on right hand, left hand, we're gonna put it together, and we're gonna work in sections. So you can find all the sections in the chapter markers below this video. Let's dive in. So we're gonna begin with our right hands. I want you to take your right hand one finger, place it on G sharp, three finger on C sharp, and five finger on E. And all you have to do is move through those three notes. Two, three, four. And then you stay there for another four repetitions. Then you're gonna move your thumb up to A, C sharp, E, play that twice. Then you're gonna keep your thumb where it is, but you're gonna move your third finger to D and then F sharp, two of those. Then you're gonna move to G sharp. This is called B sharp, which is the same note as C. And then you're gonna play F sharp, then it's a different one, G sharp, C sharp, E, G sharp, C sharp, D, and then F sharp. This is still a B sharp, AKA C, because we had that earlier in the measure, and then there's a D sharp. So we're gonna do that measure one more time because it's challenging. G sharp, B sharp, F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, E, G sharp, C sharp, D sharp, and then F sharp, B sharp, D sharp. Now we're gonna stop here and we're gonna add the left hand because this is the most iconic part of the song. This is, if you can play this, everybody will be like, wow, that's Moonlight Sonata. So let's take a look at what our left hand is gonna be doing. It's actually pretty simple. We've got C sharp as an octave, and then we've got B, and then we've got A, and then we skip down to F sharp, <laughs> so moody, and then G sharp, G sharp, and then we're gonna play C sharp, G sharp, and C sharp. And I'm using my pedal, so I play the chord or the, the octave, and then every time I change it, I lift, change and lift, change and lift, G sharp, G sharp, and then change and lift. So let's put that together very slowly. Let's get both hands in position, take a deep breath. <sighs> Here we go. that this hand stays in position. Our left hand's gonna move. Two, three, four, and we shift to an A major chord shape. Now our left hand moves to F sharp and our right hand shifts as well. Here we go, so we've got G sharp, B sharp, F sharp, it changes. Repeat the left hand, thumb drops down. So once you're comfortable there, we'll keep going into the next section. So here you're gonna be playing a very low note. It's E, G sharp, and C sharp. And then you're going to be playing G sharp, C sharp, and E. So these are your C sharp minor chord inversions. So let's do it again. E, G sharp, C, G sharp, C, E. Now watch what I do here. This is gonna repeat. I'm gonna play with my one, two, three, and now I'm gonna hit both of these G sharps together while I keep this movement happening, and then I repeat this G sharp, and that's where we get this beautiful melody that starts to come out. So all together. And you hit the G sharp again, so it's dun, dun, dun. Now there's big octave shapes in this song, so it's really important to remember not to get tense in these octaves. You have to play the octave and then allow this sense of relaxation through your wrist as you move through the song whenever possible. So let's play this part together one more time and we'll keep going through the next few measures. E, G sharp, C, G sharp, C, E, and we're just rolling through that again, getting ready for our octave on G sharp. Play the G sharp again. Now we've got D sharp, F sharp, and we're gonna roll through that a few times. So keep going, nice rotation in your wrist. Here's that octave. Repeat the G sharp, another octave, C sharp, E twice. Then you're gonna move up to an octave on A, C sharp, F sharp, two of those. Then G 
G sharp, B, E twice, then F sharp and A, B, D sharp, and then, this is crazy, we're gonna be playing A and B. This is a very big shape. Notice how I'm playing at the very tippy ends of the keys. This is the only way it's possible for me. And then I'm going to actually place my one finger or my thumb on this B and the D sharp just so that I can get through the shape. So let's play just through measure seven, eight um, to get a feel for that. So we'll get ready on G sharp. A, C sharp, F sharp, then G sharp, B, E, A and F sharp, B, D sharp, big stretch. And then the next position you're gonna be in is right here. And you've just got a full bar of this going on. Okay. So let's take a look at how the left hand goes in this section. We're gonna start on measure five, and we've got a C sharp, G sharp, and C sharp. Then everything shifts down. We actually keep the G sharp, but we play B sharps, which are C. And then we're gonna go back to C sharp, down to F sharp, up to B, B, and E. So the mood kind of lifts at the end of this section. Starts kind of solemn. This feels really cranky to me. And then C, F sharp, B, B, E. So let's put it all together. Beginning at measure five, we've got our hands here. We've got C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, E, G sharp, C sharp. Here we go. Okay, take some time on that section and then we'll carry on. Now, before we move on to the next section, I just wanna let you know that inside the piano members area, we have an interactive practice tool that allows you to play along with the sheet music. You can speed it up, you can slow it down, you can highlight and loop certain sections that you're working on that might be a little bit challenging. And it is a great tool. So make sure you take advantage of our free seven day trial below this video so you can use that as you practice. Okay, so in this next section, we're gonna be working um, measures 10 all the way through measure 21. So this is like a whole page of music and it's an absolutely beautiful portion of the song. The whole song's beautiful. So we're gonna begin on G natural, B, E. Now by the time you get to the last rotation of this, you wanna make sure that you've got your third finger on the E so you can play the octave on the G. Then we've got B and F as the center notes. Another octave here. G again. C, E, G, B, E, G, C sharp, E, F sharps, C sharp, E, another F sharp, B, D, F sharp, B, D, up to G natural, B, C sharp, then everybody pivots down to E, B, C sharp, F sharp. F sharp, B, D, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, repeat that. And then we're gonna move to B, D, F sharp, two. The D turns to a D sharp here. We get our octave. Here's a big stretch, five finger comes up, E, G. Here we're gonna be playing an A sharp, it sounds crunchy. Resolves. D sharp, F sharp, repeat that. We've got another octave on the outside of that shape. And then we stretch up, same thing, we've done this before. And then we've got A sharp, and then to an octave on B. Familiar territory. Then we've got that octave again, D natural. 
natural, E sharp, big octave, C sharp, G sharp. Then we're going to be playing A, C sharp, F sharp. Then we shift down, we've got a G natural, B, D. We're almost there. And then we've got F sharp, A, D sharp. It sounds crunchy. All right, once you're comfortable with that right hand, we're gonna add in the left hand, but first let's run through it together. So we've got an octave on E, then we move down to D, and then C natural, and then B, and then A sharp, <laughs> and then B. It's just so dark. Then we've got E, G, F sharp, octave, and then B. Then, Moving into measure 16, we've got E, G, E, B. And then we do that again. E, G, E, and I'm lifting my pedal each time I play one of these. Then we've got G sharp. Then we've got E sharp, which is an F. And then F sharp. And then B. And then B sharp. So that's the left hand. On its own, it sounds very dark and sad and kind of crunchy in some places, but when we put it together, oh, it's so beautiful. So let's take a listen. We're gonna get our hands ready. Let's go. Getting my fingers ready for that bigger shape. Shifting my left hand down. Here's some movement. That's how that section sounds hands together. So you may notice at the end of measure 21, we see a bass clef up here where the treble clef has previously been. And what this means is we're moving our right hand lower and we're gonna be using the bass clef rules to play these notes. So we're gonna be playing a very low C sharp octave in our right hand. And these are the shapes we're making. Call those out, C sharp, F sharp, A, twice. Then you hit the octave again, F sharp, G sharp, E sharp, which is F, G sharp. And then we're gonna be moving here. So we've got F sharp, A, C sharp. Now we're in the treble clef, so we're just inverting this F sharp minor chord. A, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A. And now we've got a familiar pattern, G sharp, B. It's just moving. So just shift down to C, essentially, F sharp, A, back up to C sharp, and then we're on D sharp, F sharp, G, and you can just hang out there. And then we've got that D sharp again, and then we've got E, G sharp, C sharp, twice, down to D sharp, and then C sharp, E, A sharp, and then we've got some fun to have, but I'm gonna pause there. We're gonna put that little section hands together first because what happens next is quite different. So take some time with that right hand. One of the things I wanted to mention, specifically in measure 26, we can see here that the top note of this octave is a dotted half note. So technically, as you're playing that, you're supposed to hang on to it 
but for me, I find that becomes very uncomfortable very quickly. So that's up to you how you wanna do that. I play it, use my pedal to kind of cheat so I can let go of that octave and relax my hand. Just a little nuance I thought I should mention. Okay, so let's see what the left hand is doing here. We've got a very low C sharp. Then we've got an F sharp, F sharp, C sharp. Very dark. Then we're gonna move all the way up to E sharp, E sharp, and C sharp. Then F sharp, D sharp, C sharp. Then we've got B sharps with a G sharp in the middle. Twice. And then we're just gonna keep this G sharp and move to C sharp. Play that cleanly, Lisa. There you go. And then we're gonna be moving all the way down to F sharp. Now this funny looking X thing, it looks like it comes out of a video game. Um, it's like pixelated. So what you're gonna do there, that's a double sharp. So F is already sharped, it just means sharp it again. So move it up another half step, which brings you to G. So we've got for that measure, 27. Here, here, here. And by measure 28, we're back to G sharp. So to put it all together, getting ready nice and low on these C sharps. Here's our F sharp minor shape, inverting it again. Celebrate that you've gotten that far. It's amazing hands together. It's so pretty. Um, that top note of those octave shapes, it just sings. It's gorgeous. All right, we're gonna take a look at measure 28 and then go all the way to measure 31. It's a short section, but it's doing something a little bit different. So we're gonna give it a little bit of extra attention. We've got a B sharp, down the octave, it's a C. <laughs> D sharp, G sharp, same bottom notes, but we're gonna move our top note to A and then F sharp. Now imagine, don't play this, imagine you just hear this in the left and then you're gonna be playing B sharp, D sharp, and you're gonna do that four times. Now this next measure looks a little wild. You're gonna be playing a note down in the bass clef first. So you're gonna be playing this E here and then you have to travel all the way up to this E fairly quickly. And then you're gonna move G sharp, C sharp, up to the E, bottom notes are the same, and then C sharp, then you're gonna repeat that whole thing just down here. E, G sharp, C sharp, up to the E, and then the C sharp. And that's the right hand. Now the left hand spends most of its time on G sharp. We're gonna move our one finger all the way up to this G sharp here, and we're gonna use it to play the A and the F sharp. Then back to here, we're playing just G sharp, and we've got two of those. So together, it sounds like this. Measure 32, it gets a little crazy. The song takes a turn. So we are diverting away from the standard theme and we're playing these really cool broken chord patterns. So on measure 32, you're still going to be in the bass clef. So you're gonna be playing D sharp way down here, A, F sharp, and then B sharp. So look at those, those notes. We're really just playing around with the notes of a D sharp diminished chord. So D sharp, a, F sharp, B sharp, and then you just keep kind of climbing up. Now we're using treble clef rules. And this one's a B sharp. That's the first one. So you want to maybe practice that little section over and over until it feels comfortable. 
The next one, we've got E, C sharp, G sharp, E. We're just repeating these notes, climbing our way up, C sharp, G sharp. Then the next one, we're gonna play C sharp, F double sharp, E, and A sharp. So look, you can think of this as a C sharp diminished chord. So measure 34, A sharp, ends on the A sharp, new pattern, F sharp, B sharp, A, D sharp. So, F sharp diminished. Ends on the D sharp. Now here, things get fun. So we're gonna be playing B sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, B sharp, D sharp, A, B sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, B sharp, D sharp, A, B sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, and then C sharp, F sharp, A. Wow. <laughs> so there's a lot going on there with the right hand. It feels really challenging and overwhelming. And when I was working on this song to prepare for this, I was like, oh my gosh. But once you realize there are just inverted chord patterns, it's actually really fun to play. And when you get it, your fingers will feel like they are flying. So stay positive. Remember to smile as you're practicing that section. And let's take a look at the left hand. Okay, thankfully, the left hand plays G sharp. G sharp. G sharp. G sharp. Hangs on to G sharp for a while, and we're good. So. <laughs> That's a relief, so we can really focus on what our right hand is doing. So let's take it from measure 32. So we're going to be working with this D sharp, A, F sharp, and B sharp. This D sharp diminished chord. Here we go. Keep your left hand, and we're gonna be playing B sharp, <laughs> working our way down. I'm mostly using my one and my three fingers for this. <sighs> we did it. Take a moment, this is party time. You feel really, really good about that. Okay. So we're gonna pick up at the end of measure 37. So what we're gonna find here in this next little section is that it's not long before we return to a theme that feels familiar. So if we're playing just from the bass clef here in measure 37, we've got F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A, then our thumb moves down to B sharp, and then we're just walking up and down here, and then we've got D sharp, F sharp, A, then the C sharp. And this is the same thing. D sharp, F sharp, A, C sharp, F sharp, A, and again. But it's gonna change in just a second. So we've got C sharp, E, C sharp, twice. This is a very beautiful part of the song. Then we've got D sharp, A, C sharp twice, then we've got G sharp, B sharp, D sharp, F sharp, B sharp, and E. G sharp, C sharp, then we're gonna go G sharp, C sharp, E, and guess what? We're in familiar territory. Woo, okay, so you've already worked on that part, but we'll go through it together. First, I want to work on the left hand for the section that we just did. So, in measure 37, we are already hanging on to this tied G sharp. 
we're gonna play another one and another one and then on measure 40 we move up to a f sharp g c sharp g sharp c sharp sandwich <laughs> so we're going to put that all together so here we go in the middle of measure 37 f sharp a d sharp f sharp start a new section. So everything up to this point now, you've worked on, you've studied, but by the time we get into measure 46, things start to change a little bit again. So I don't know if it was just a cruel joke uh, Beethoven was trying to play by creating a very repetitious and beautiful theme that always changes just a little bit. It's like, feels like it's never quite always the same, so you always have to pay attention. So let's go through the right hand of this section. So let's begin measure 46. We've got G sharp and E. So we're gonna be playing here, B, E, and then we're gonna to go to B, E, G sharp. We repeat that, and now we have our octave on B. F sharp, A, and so it's the same but different. <laughs> sharp with an F sharp, G sharp in the middle, C sharp, E, G sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G, twice, then up to an octave on E, G sharp, C sharp, two times, I can't even talk anymore, okay, then we've got D natural, F sharp, A, B sharp, F sharp, G sharp, if you just play the bottom notes now, C sharp. G sharp. The middle note shifting to E sharp, C sharp, and look at this, another big, big, big shape. So it's really uncomfortable. Again, if you can't hit this, just worry about the top note because that's the melody, but here we go. Then we've got a B sharp. Sounds crunchy, but it resolves up to the C sharp, E sharp, G sharp. And you stay there. We've got the C sharp on the outside again. And here it repeats that big ouch. <laughs> These do get easier. Again with the B sharp. Because that was a lot that we just did. So it's a lot of the same theme, but it's placed in a different spot on the keyboard. So it's similar movements, different sounds, and it's a lot to get used to. So let's just take a look at what the left hand is doing. Again, thankfully, Beethoven kept this left hand simple. We've got E, D sharp, E, D sharp, C sharp. Then we've got our B sharps with the G sharp in the middle. And then we can just keep that G sharp and pivot up here to the shape. F sharp, G, C sharp. Then F sharp, A, F sharp, C sharp. And that happens again. F sharp, A, F sharp, C sharp. And then we're going to go to F sharp. It's so dark. So all together, let's try this.
Okay, I can't wait to keep going, but just take your time on that section. I can't stress how important it is to take this song in pieces. This is not a song that you just sit down and learn and play in one sitting. This is a piece that is a time investment, but it is so worth the time and effort that you put into it because it is so beautiful and it's so classic and it's so important. Okay, so take your time there, don't rush. And when you're ready, we'll come back at measure, let's, let's take it from measure 55 at the beginning of a line. And we're gonna be playing octaves on C sharp, E sharp, G sharp. Here we're playing a B natural, F sharp, A. And we stay there. We play this B again, but this time E, G sharp, and then we shift to A, E, G sharp, A again, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, D sharp, F sharp, keep your big shell like the same on G sharp, but then once in the middle change to C sharp and E. And then we get to move down to an octave on F sharp. So before we go any further, I just wanna go through that little section with you again, because when I mess up in the song, it's usually here, even though the notes are very close together, it's just, it's different and it's challenging. So we've got our B natural. We get to just relax there, it's so pretty and uplifting. Here it changes, A on the outside, repeat the A, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, E. Now we can go to F sharp, C sharp, D sharp, again, move up to G sharp, C sharp, D sharp, A, C sharp, D sharp, and then we're going to move to G sharp, C sharp, E. This might be the craziest moment of the whole song. That's the shape you're supposed to be able to play. Um, I just want to cry right now because it's just so uncomfortable. So if you can't hit that, that's okay. You can just do this. But correctly, you're here, and then you're playing a B sharp and a D sharp, and then this time you can just play it without the octave. And we're going to stop there. We're going to just work on that section hands together. So our... Left hand, measure 55. C sharp, F sharp, D sharp, E. C sharp, D sharp, B sharp, C sharp. And then in measure 58, A, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp. I said to complete that little melodic phrase. So I recommend you try to memorize this little bit. Because of the nuances of the right hand, you wanna be really comfortable with what your left hand is doing. C sharp. F sharp, D sharp, up a half step, down to C sharp, up to D sharp, down to B sharp, up a half step, then A, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp. Okay, so let's put that together. And this might be my, like the second most favorite part of the song. Okay, here we go. It feels like a thought that's not finished though. So we need to keep going into the next section. Here we've got a G sharp, C sharp, E. We did this together, so we can put those hands together now. Let's do this. G sharp, C sharp, E, twice. And here's that crazy shape. And you've done this before, friends. We're in the home stretch. So here things change a little bit with the melody shifting to the left hand. So we're gonna just pick it up from measure 60, because uh, it's just it's a it's a new sort of moment in the song. And we're on like the last page. This is like really truly the home stretch. So we're gonna be playing with our right hand, E and C sharp. So we're gonna be playing here, G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, E. Repeat that. Keep the G sharp and move to D sharp and F sharp. Now it changes G sharp, E, C, familiar, isn't this? You've done 
done this before. Here it's a bit different. We're gonna be moving to that B sharp, D sharp, A, B sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, down to A, B sharp, then we're gonna be playing G sharp, F sharp. Okay, now we've got E and C sharp. Then we're gonna be going up to the E, C sharp, back to this pattern. Here we go with the B sharp, D sharp, A. We've done this before. All the way down to A. hands together. For now, we're going to be playing E, G sharp, and C sharp. And we just played it twice. <sighs> we made it to the end. So the left hand gets pretty busy in this section. So we've come down from this G sharp in measure 59. Then we're going to be playing C sharp and G sharp. And then check this out. You're just doing that dun 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 again, but you're hitting uh, a C natural, which is a B sharp in your, your uh, five finger. So you're here and then you're here. So together, bum, 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 back to the C sharp, bum, bum, octave. with this um, fifth in measure 66, you play this and you hang on with your five finger. Then you can play the C sharp and keep holding on because it's tied and then play the G sharp. And then you've got G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, E, G sharp, E, C sharp. Then you've got this big C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and you repeat it. So all together from measure 59, where we've got this G sharp octave, G sharp here. because these feel really challenging. So I'm gonna talk through this a little more slowly. Let's take it from measure 60. So if we're here, on the final rotation, we're playing the G sharps together. Then we play the E, and then we play this G sharp. So it happens just after. So one more time. When you're playing this B sharp, that's the time you want to be playing the G sharp here. And then G sharps together. Together. Apart. Now I like to split this between the already here. So you could play G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, E, G sharp, E, C. And then you could move to your final chords. And you've got a fermata over 
for the last one. So you can hang out there for as long as you would like, taking a very dramatic pause, perhaps stare into the distance. And then you lift your hands off the keys and accept your applause. So that is the end, but it's not the end because the next steps will be adding in dynamics, holding a sad story in your heart as you play it so you can convey all the drama and emotion. So you can use the dynamic markings on the page to guide you or you can allow this to become your own dramatic experience, unique to you. But the one thing I wanna make sure you know is that you can use something called rubato. So instead of playing, every note on the beat, you can push it and pull it and manipulate time a little bit. here, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with this. Just have fun. Feel the feelings, play the piece, record yourself because I really, really want to hear what the end result is for you. And if you have any questions or need help along the way, comment below. All right, I'm going to play through the piece for you now. Happy practicing and I'll see you next time.